The uh, crab fits in there. The uh, the uh, elephant fits in over here. The little bird fits in by the side of the elephant and makes up the tusk of the elephant. Um, the butterfly fits in to finish off the elephant and start the next part. The whale fits in and makes the, the, the butterfly complete by putting in its feelers which are missing. And then you've got the duck that should have fitted in by the fish which I forgot and the foot of the fish is missing and also part of the crab. So that duck is quite an important piece because he makes up two animals. Now the next piece that fits in I think is the horse and the horse goes in and uh, fits in there somewhere. Let me just see. No, I think I'm wrong. I think it's the mouse. The mouse fits in up against the crab and you make up the ear of the mouse. And then the uh, little jumbuck fits in. And then you've got the uh, the ram's head. And then you've got the armadillo fits in. He makes up the jumbuck's tail. And then you've got the kangaroo who fits in down here against the elephant and the bird because he's got a foot missing. Now then, where does this horse fit? The horse fits in somehow in the middle here. It's in just there, and he's got the uh, mouse, forms his tail, and the uh, he fits around like that, so that the mouth of the kangaroo fits against the uh, the the ear of the horse fits in the mouth of the kangaroo, and then you've got the sheep, which is the last one to fit in, and he fits up in the corner and he completes the ram's head. So now all the animals are fitted in. Now because they're all loose I couldn't show you in the camera but what I'll do I'll bring the camera over and you can see now how all these animals are fitted together. I'll just bring you over gently and turn it around. Now you should be able to see this light's right a little bit better. You should be able to see, especially if I take a picture away, you should be able to see a little bit better that all these animals fit in to the puzzle. Now none of them really lock together, they're quite loose and you can move them about That one isn't fitting in quite right. But uh, now, as it says in the uh, instructions, there's some gaps. You can see the gaps here. Now those gaps, I'll put you back now, those gaps have got to be filled somehow to complete the picture. So I'll put, the, uh, put them back together now, where they should be. They've moved about a bit, and this is the trouble. If you move it, everything moves around and you have trouble. I think it's this little creature here. He's not in right. There we go. Now, all those creatures are in there, but they're not being held very firmly. And there's gaps between. Now, as it said in the instructions at the beginning, there's some spaces. Now you remember the spaces that I was talking about here, which I made? Those spaces can easily now be fitted in by just looking at the space and the shape. In fact, that's one of them. 
It's got some rather strange fruit on there, which I've made, each one made of that laminate. And you can see by the shapes where they fit. That one fits in there. It's quite obvious where they fit because of the shape. And this one that looks a bit like a fish, but it isn't a fish. And again, you can see exactly where that fits because it's of its shape. Now you've got another one, which uh, another strange shape, looks like a butterfly or something, but that fits in to its shape. It fits in there, locks in. There's another little shape that looks a bit like a bird. But there's a shape here that looks like a bird, so that fits in. And then you've got two more small shapes. One there, fits in the middle, and another one, which fits in the... Uh, right in the front there. Now that completes... oh no, there's one more. I missed one. There we are. There's one there. Now that completes the puzzle. Everything is fastened in and is much more secure. But obviously, if you turned it upside down, which the uh, instructions tells you, the, uh, the whole thing would fall apart. So what you've got is in the lid of the box, or in the beehive, you've got this piece. And this is a tree. When it was in the box it looked like a tree in a winter scene. Got another picture here, this is where it came from. It fits in there like that. On this box there's a winter scene. Not very well painted, but I'm not a painter. I'm just an amateur. But it looks pretty good, it's recognizable. And if you fit that in, it makes a makes a winter scene. So if you take that out, now remember those little bees that I was telling you about that are on the front of this box? If you turn this piece over and put it on top fits quite nicely and each one of those little bees now is poking through the plastic. Now if you open the wings on those little bees they actually lock the lid on. So the lid is held down by these little bee wings. So now You've got it boxed together with all the little bees, wings open, and now it won't fall out. Nothing falls out. But, as the instructions tells you on the box, that once you put the lid on, you can turn the puzzle over. And when you turn the puzzle over, the answer to Kit Williams' book is on the back. And there it is. Now I hope you can see what that is. But it's a huge bee sitting on a piece of honeycomb. I hope you can see that. And so the title of the book which Kit had made and done is called The Bee on the Comb. And there we have a bee on the comb. And that was an answer, the, the way I decided that I would answer Kit's puzzle. Now, I sent this in to Kit Williams, and I was number 429. Now, when I sent it in, because I'd spent such a lot of time on it, I thought if it doesn't win anything, I want it back. And even if it does win, I want it back. <laughs> So uh, I sent the money that it cost me to post it, I sent a cheque with it, um, so that it could be sent back to me. And that's why I've still got it. But, about a year later, after this uh, competition had finished, and uh, it had been on the Terry Wogan show, and uh, somebody had had the prize and got the book with a title on it, they'd won it. Incidentally, the, the chap that won it, or person that won it, they actually uh, made a mechanical cockerel. And uh, when you wound the handle on this mechanical cockerel, 
a little bee came on a bit of wire floating across and landed on the comb of the cockerel. So that's how he told him the name of the book which was the bee landed on the comb of the cockerel. Now that won the prize. Now I, I don't know whether it was the best answer, I don't know, but it was certainly one uh, that was chosen because I suppose it was much easier uh, to show that on uh, television and of course he'd followed the rules. Now I may not have stood a chance of winning because I bent the rules a little bit. Not only did I use things out of Kit's book for my puzzle but I also had a poem which was written. Now that may have disqualified me, I don't know. As I say I hadn't used any, hadn't used any words in this and the answer was there again be on the comb uh, without any words but I may not have uh, stood a chance because I'd done that but this little newspaper article was printed about a year later I can't even see what what dates on this but it was in July of uh, 1975 I think it says on there no it can't be 1975 1970 now I can't see when this actually this article was printed, but it talks about uh, this particular prize winning, and it says here that ten thousand entries, ten thousand people sent entries in for this prize. Now I can't believe that Kit Williams, personally, went through ten thousand entries for his competition to choose the best one. Obviously, he must have had some help because it would have took him forever to look through all these all these uh, entries. But the thing about this, what they were complaining about in this uh, Clue to Missing Entries article is um, that uh, they actually were sitting in a warehouse somewhere in, in London, I think it was, and uh, they weren't returned back to the, their owners. Whether they ever got back, I don't know, but according to this article they were just sitting, 10,000 of them, sitting in a warehouse somewhere down in London. And my sister sent me that uh, that little article, so it was interesting as to what uh, whether the people. And so I was glad that I sent the money because I managed to uh, get my my entry for this puzzle to be returned to me, and so I still got it. Now this is all very interesting, and uh, I hope you find it fascinating. Plus the uh, the way I made this puzzle and how it worked, but um, one of the reasons I'm making this video, uh, partly to show uh, what I did and Kit Williams being an artist and all that, um, but I thought this was a really good idea. Now lots of people make jigsaw puzzles. They love puzzles and secrets. Uh, as I've said, Kit Williams. Uh, made a lot of money out of uh, his puzzle books and his uh, golden uh, hair. So I think if somebody, some entrepreneur is watching this and sees my idea of how I put this thing together, this puzzle, they could use some of the elements that I've used in this puzzle and made it into a, a slightly I'm not saying that everyone should make <laughs> anyone should make the uh, pieces together like I did. I, I, I made them in a very complicated manner. But uh, you could simplify this and use some of the elements whereby you would have a book, you could write a book with clues in um, and have pu uh, puzzle pieces that didn't fit together in a conventional way so you've got to read the book in order to know how to fit the puzzle together and maybe fit it together in a very similar way in a box like this and that the secret or the picture of what you were actually trying to make would be on the back after you'd made it. Now I find that uh, quite interesting and I'm sure there's money to be made out of that. Now I don't mind anybody who's out there who sees this video can go ahead and use my idea because I'm too old now to uh, worry about making ideas and making making a fortune, but I'm sure that this could work if you're a somebody who knows anybody who makes jigsaw puzzles. This might be another way of making a puzzle that uh, 
covers several bases. I mean, it, it shows another element to jigsaw puzzle making or puzzle making. There's a puzzle, there's a book, and uh, various things coming together to produce what I think is a very interesting thing. So if anyone wants to take it up, they're quite welcome to, I don't mind. Maybe they could mention that I had the first idea for it or something, that, that would, might be nice. But I'm not looking to uh, make any money out of it myself. But if the idea appeals to anybody to create a new kind of puzzle, then by all means go ahead and do so. Anyway, that's my little uh, story about the bee on the cone. I hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, and Grandad will be back with some other tall stories. I'll see you all my guys. Bye now.